This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. We're talking today about resilient homes that can withstand just about anything and be affordable and be comfortable and be resource efficient. Who else could put all of this together in little old Hawaii but Mr. Dennis Suzuki, factory authorized representative for Strata International. What in the world is Strata International? Oh, just a little company, 34 billion annual sales. Thank you very much all over the world. And we're going to get into the details of what makes Strata's buildings really, really, really special and particularly applicable to Hawaii. So welcome to the program, Mr. Suzuki, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting us. me. Yeah. So first, give us a little background about uh, what Strata is all about worldwide. Strata, Strata is a company that uh, makes foam houses in one area that is insulated and it's uh, durable, low-income housing. We also can go high-end, mm -hmm. commercial housing, and we can go up to several stories high. Mm -hmm. And our job is to make the shell on it. Mm -hmm. And we insulate the item with, with uh, polystyrene as well as... Uh, uh, we use uh, some, some uh, additive, and we also use sand, mm -hmm. and we also use uh, items like uh, uh, some, some sort of uh, adhesive to put them together. Yep. And it's a great thing for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And this falls under the general heading of modular homes, where you make building components, especially home components, at the factory ship them in such that they can fit onto into a Matson container and onto the back of a truck. Mm. And then you truck them to your construction site. Right. And say for a typical home, how many guys would it take, uh, assuming that you've laid your slab, mm. how many guys would it take to assemble, say, a typical 2,000-foot home? First of all, you don't need to have skilled labor. We can go uh, on the please. lower end of the program and we don't need any uh, cranes, lifts, or anything. They can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's lightweight for shipping, and it has a frame construction for, to lift out. Bonded Wonderful. on one corner, and mm -hmm. the homes are, can last more than 100 years. Yep, yep. And we're, we're going to see the details of that. If we could bring the, uh, the first slide up, please. Yeah. Now, here is a cross-section of your typical wall construction. Can you... It looks like an e extruded polystyrene interior yeah. and then sa sabscrete. Do you have any idea what sabscrete is? It's a cement. Now, what I'm wondering is Hawaii is rich in certain natural resources, including basalt rock. I wonder if, and a lot of our concrete uh, comes from that locally mined basalt rock. I wonder if the local basalt could be, if we went into uh, assembly or manufacture locally, if the basalt rock could be ground up and, and used as that component. Well, depending on where the rock is at, because I got a mm -hmm. call from the people who want to use the volcano, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm against that, mm -hmm. because it might happen to seal her, her item. So mm -hmm. what we can do is that we, we can consider the sand because uh, uh, it's something that we already have, mm -hmm. and uh, we can have things like uh, it's a ex expanded polystyrene, mm -hmm. but this got nothing to do with the uh, po po polystyrene on the lunch container. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, to totally different. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay, the adhesive, yeah, that we, we make is going to be a fantastic thing to bond it together, and all we're looking at is uh, finish. It's going to mm -hmm. be at uh, one one and a quarter inch to one and a half mm -hmm. inch, depending mm -hmm. on where we put it. And the thing is this, is that the, the, the thing is strong. Yeah, yep. It can go hurricane, mm -hmm. high winds. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can keep the temperature very, very cool. 
Mm -hmm. And it, it is a wonderful item. Yeah. And one thing, one of the buzzwords that's going around the architectural community and the building community recently is resiliency. We know that more extreme weather is coming, coming. We've already experienced quite a bit of it in the last few years, and it ain't going to get any better. We know that. So the city planners and the state planners and the architects, engineers are revolving around the idea of resiliency. And it sounds like this type of structure is kind of the ultimate in, in a resilient structure. It's going to take just about anything that Mother Nature can throw at it. Yes, thank you very much. As you know, there's no framing in this, mm -hmm. and it's a, you can shape it any shape you want. Mm -hmm. We can even help the zoo if we need to. Superior performance, insulation, reliability, structure integrity, and we can compete with mm -hmm. what's out there and get it cheaper. Mm -hmm. And as you invited me, it's green, eco-friendly construction material, mm -hmm. and it's very fast to assemble, requires no heavy equipment, very lightweight, uh, safe construction for unskilled workers, as I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. Two-part system, make for simple logistics, inexpensive to build, while staying extremely durable and safe. Yeah. And uh, you, your part of safe is the weather, you know? Yes. And, of course, we build a water table. Yep. So we can yep. do that in Kakako or in yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Mapuna Puna. Yeah, it looks like, just from what you've shown me about how this thing is assembled, that it really and truly is waterproof. <laughs> so if we have flooding events and the water starts sloshing around, I think all you need to do is just ensure that the water doesn't get through the door wells. It, it, it floats. It floats. Just like your boogie <laughs> board or just like your surfboard, it floats. So if we were in a lower part of Mapuna Puna and uh, the flooding came up, it would just it would flood come up. up. And then when the, off, the yes. water recycle, You're right. it would go right back down again. Now mm -hmm. You can't get much more... Uh, resilient than that. So why don't we look at the, uh, the next slide because you've got all kinds of different offerings. Now this looks like a thermal analysis about where say the heat is coming through the building. Uh, do, do you know any detail about this? Yeah, when they design the thing they have to make mm -hmm. sure what the weather is like with the sunrise, the sunset, mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. where they put in the equipment because you cannot put high-tech equipment in a warm place. Mm -hmm. Because okay. it, it's producing heat as it right. is. Yeah. And that's everybody's problem. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and you cannot put, if you need to put an overhang to, to make the rain go away, then you need to put a, what you call an extended roof line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that this building is on the Big Island. Yeah? Oh, th this is a, a rendering of a Big Island building. Yes, okay. it's, it's, okay. it's rendering of Big Island. Mm -hmm. All the colors you see there is all made out of the foam, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's uh, the, so we can build any shape you want, and our job is to make sure that when, when the architect or the designer makes it, we double check it and check it, and we have to make sure the foundation sits where you're going to put the weight on it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because ours is so light, it can hold the weight. So in this particular instance, this is a very, very complex uh, building, mm -hmm. You, the architect, would send the specs to the factory. Right. I, I think you have worldwide factories worldwide. because you're a worldwide. I, I assume there's one on the mainland. And they would figure out how to build the different components and how to make the components small enough so that they can fit onto the back of a truck. Right. So that you put it in a Matson container or whatever, ship it over here, it gets offloaded to trucks, and then the different components get shipped to the building site, you have your foundation Already ready. made, ahead yeah. of time, ready to, mm -hmm. waiting for our unit to go on. Yeah, and then it just, as you said, just takes a few guys right. to, to assemble it. And it could be a few uh, unskilled guys. Of course, we've got nothing but skilled people here in Hawaii. We but, can uh, use unskilled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we train them, go on mm -hmm. a MOGA and everything. We'll bring the people from the mainland to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we get them going. So what we can provide is that we provide technical training Field, field training, construction and technical design, we, we can help. Structural technology construction estimate, which we'll give. Mm -hmm. And training on, on CAD and software application. We even negotiate with the, with the county code official to tell them mm -hmm. what's right mm -hmm. and what's wrong. 
Mm -hmm. And well, we'll provide plans, equipment, and produce our brand. And provide fire coating to, to surpass four hours. Yeah, yeah. Because, and, uh, just like Marco Polo, we need to work on that. Yes, yes. So we, uh, yeah, I happen to be chair of the Hawaii Building Code Council. Yeah. So we have all the different building codes sitting around a table once a month, and you, you struck on some of the basic concerns that we talk about as, as we're sitting around. Of course, after the Marco Polo, we're all very, very, very fire conscious. And right. We've had some bad, bad residential fires just in the last couple of weeks, too. So mm. it's something that we can't, certainly can't solve overnight, but we really, really need to address it. And building with this type of material goes, goes a long way towards uh, uh, doing that. Okay, because we insulate the thing, we have high insulation, lower operation mm -hmm. costs, which you're concerned mm -hmm. about energy. Extremely durable, lower maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. yeah? Make non-combustible material, mm -hmm. eliminate the possibility of structure fire. Mm -hmm. And structure is easy to modify, remodel, to reproduce the building. If they want to do it for their children to make an extension or they want to do mm -hmm. so, we can do this mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you mentioned uh, high insulation. There's two ways to build, say, a residence in Hawaii. Either you make it really open, like our, our ancestral buildings, uh, the type of home that you and I grew up in, single wall construction, so forth, big windows, or you can seal the building up. And the, build, the homes that are going up in the Eva Plains and on the, on the neighbor islands in, in the subdivisions, they are centrally air conditioned. So the better insulated they are, the smaller the AC unit can be. Because right. you don't have heat pouring in through the walls and, and the windows and so forth. And you, you mentioned overhangs. It, the more you can overhang, say, windows. You don't get damages. Yeah. Yeah, from the weather and the rain, like Hilo. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I, I notice a lot of houses are built next to the coal house. Mm -hmm. I keep on telling the businesses and people, move the building this way mm -hmm. make your entrance on the opposite side don't do it that way make it so the water is not close to the house mm -hmm. away on the ground yeah away yep. and not put the water or the air conditioning dripping on the dirt next to your house it'll cause mm -hmm. termite and by the way our building is termite free uh, yep yep uh, <laughs> po po extruded polystyrene yes yes so a lot smart. of things but wow. not uh, not not eps can we see the, uh, the next slide, please? Okay, so the, the Big Island home that you showed, or structure, is obviously a luxury structure. Here's an example of uh, another one. We just wanted to make certain that you, to say that you build on the high end, and then we'll see the uh, affordable side. So this looks like it's right on the coast. And another consideration is that from what I can see, the components of your building are resistant to uh, salt air. Yes. Very, very important in Hawaii. I think every one of us has experienced the salt water damage, uh -huh. e even miles from, from the ocean, because the, the salt air is, is virtually everywhere. Yeah, we have three components, now two components on that. It's, it's a shell of the foam, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And we do have quarter inch of insulation that will reflect, keep mm -hmm. the the, the walls from getting damaged. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to paint over, but you don't normally paint. We mm -hmm. have the insulation paint that you can do it. Mm -hmm. And this will keep the salt air, the wind and the rain away from the house. And you said one of my favorite words, which is reflectivity. Yeah. I'm uh, the energy codes guy for the state. And I emphasize three things, reflectivity, reflectivity, reflectivity. And I, I saw where you're building that building is white, and when we we'll see the affordable housing, those are also very light colors, which mm -hmm. are ideal for, for tropic. Right. But on that cheery note, we need to take a break. Howard Wig, Code Green. With me is the Honorable Dennis Suzuki, factory authorized rep for Strata International, back in a moment. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. 
Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. The Honorable Dennis Suzuki is with me, and we've been talking about what he reps, and so far we've looked at high-end structures. Let's go, Mr. Suzuki, to affordable housing, because e almost every day we're asking ourselves how to get affordable in a place like Hawaii. Now here's an example of affordable housing, nothing very fancy, but I don't think the homeless people on the street want anything very fancy. They just want a roof, a nice roof over their head. So what, what is this uh, home all about? Well, first of, first of all, that building is made, made out of their, uh, the, the core of our product. And what it is is that we can bring it in like that, if you like, or we can have fast assembly. You know, we come out all in pieces, and we can cut it to size. We have the equipment cutter and everything, and require no heavy equipment to do this. Very lightweight, safe construction for unskilled workers. Two parts making a simple logistics, inexpensive to build, while staying extremely durable and safe because of our weather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let, let's look at the, the slide after that because it's, it's kind of similar. Here is uh, examples of um, affordable housing under construction. And it, I don't see any heavy equipment floating around there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, again, I like the fact that the exteriors are white or cream colored because that is exactly what we need. That's in, right. In a, not a black, like and not any yeah. dark colors. Mm -hmm. If you're going to, the, but the fact that you're retarding the sun's heat from getting into the building means that you need little or no air conditioning, very often just a ceiling fan. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. Uh -huh. And that's a great way, number one, to decrease your construction costs, number two, to get your utility costs monthly uh, down to just about uh, uh, zero. So let's, uh, let's look at the next slide then. Okay, now as I mentioned, you can direct the factory, not you, but the architect or contractor, can direct the factory to build to such and such specs, and it can be sized such that you can get, the, is this the whole home? It looks like maybe a... No, it's about maybe a quarter of a house. Yeah, yeah. You put them all together. Mm -hmm. But it can come in like this on a, maybe we can do yeah. it to a, a, maybe a barge company, mm -hmm. bring it in, mm -hmm. maybe 50 of them one time, and assemble maybe during the weekend, you know, you can yeah. do it once the, uh, the floor is uh, paved mm -hmm. with concrete. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it would just be the barge or the boat would pull in to the pier, the trucks would line up and offload these components right at the pier onto the truck, off the truck goes to, to the building site. Yes. And that, uh, oh yeah, here, here's, uh, well this looks like, a, so, oh, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, lifting yeah, that Yeah, unloading the thing. Yeah, yeah, and getting it right onto the site. So do you think that the building on the right is maybe several of these types of components? Yes, uh, it's put, about put maybe uh, yeah. eight of them mm -hmm. put together. And as you said, they're, because they're so rugged that they are resilient against, say, hurricanes, earthquakes, yes. whatever Mother Nature might uh, throw right. at them, and, oh, and termites. Termites. Oh, I was yes, surprised. Yes, yes, yes. And you showed me some uh, specs earlier. These can be built at an estimated cost of $135 a square foot. Right. Now, that does not include the electrical hookup or the plumbing hookup. Right. Nor the foundation or the land. Oh, yeah. But $135 per square foot in Hawaii is pretty gosh darned uh, 
inexpensive, mm -hmm. shall we say. Yeah, we, we often see uh, estimates double that and even close to triple that on, on a per square foot uh, basis. And, and we're looking for affordable housing, for goodness sakes, yeah. And our, our material is, uh, that we use are all eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. And if you burn the fo foam, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't cause black smoke. Mm. It's, it's, it's already treated, and what we do is that we can recycle them if you like, you know. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to make so that we don't have to get rid of all, the, all our trees. We leave it there for Mother yeah, Nature, precisely. for our future yeah. generations. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's little or no metal involved there's in this. There's no also. metal. Yeah. There's a, I served on a, a PhD evaluation committee at UH Architects mm -hmm. just recently, and the thesis of the student was to take as many local materials as mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. and use them in the construction of, of homes and buildings. Mm -hmm. And he certainly came up with modular construction also. Yeah. Where any, any wood that we get we, has to come from, from the mainland. Yeah. Any metal we get has to come from, uh, usually it's Asia. Yeah. But we can use, I believe, some, uh, some local materials here. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure it can be done. But the, um, the thing is very, uh, how you can say, it's bonded together mm -hmm. to make a stronger finished product so it mm -hmm. doesn't fall apart. In other words, on the end, it's all bonded. Mm -hmm. Homes, like I say, last for 100 years for superior traditional manufacturing homes, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do this right away by doing low-income housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, all we need to do is get a design and we can get a price, whoever is mm -hmm. on the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people will love it inside, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. It has fans. You can put fans and blowers, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and and the thing is that people will love it in a hot sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're keeping that hot sun out, and and you mentioned a hundred years. Uh, another thing that we always look for these days is what's called resource efficiency. Mm -hmm. Number one, the materials that we're building with here are energy or resource friendly, eco-friendly, and number two, they're not going to fall apart after uh, 30 years. We can just do the refinish mm -hmm. and paint it mm -hmm. and the thing will be up there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as we uh, noted also, uh, salt water resistant mm -hmm. because a lot of our problems come from the, the salt air, even away from the coast, from mm -hmm. salt air penetrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at the uh, the next slide here. Ooh, what is a float house? The, the float house is yeah. built on the water, and as you can see it from the picture, it has uh, uh, you can have the foam with concrete that is in the water. Of course, the bottom part is concrete holding up the building. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this makes it very warm and cool, and very exotic by having a float house. Mm -hmm. And people love it, especially people who live close to a river or they, or they want to put something, put water around them. It mm -hmm. will work. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I bring back that uh, the word resiliency. We're finding more and more, and the insurance companies are really getting concerned about this. People love to live near to bodies of water. Well, guess what's happening? those bodies of water are going up and up and up as, as the glaciers uh, melt. We've got no problem on that. Yeah. It will we, float. Mm -hmm. It's, like, it's yeah. like a surfboard. We, we can see this already on, on the North Shore, out in the, the country area mm -hmm. where sometimes our uh, Cam Highway is getting washed out and the homes right near to there, if they're halfway new, they're, they're up on stilts already. But in this case, you have, you have your kind of built-in stilts because your, your foundation is number one raised and number two, it's uh, resilient, it, it's resistant to the, the forces of, of even uh, salt water. We also can build fence mm -hmm. to, to protect from the wave from coming in mm -hmm. and this foam will stand up to the wave because yeah. if we can stand up to uh, 260 mile an hour wind, 260. 260. Mm. It can stand the wind I, too I, and the rain and the wave. I was in Guam a few years ago, and there were, in the town area, there were a lot of concrete slabs where there used to be buildings. And I said, uh, what happened here? 
And he said, not long ago, we had a typhoon. They have typhoons over there mm -hmm. with 183 mile an hour gusts. And even though Guam's buildings are, they know the typhoon is coming, they still couldn't build strong enough. So, yeah, so, so what we need to do is that, mm -hmm. like I would go to Japan or the Philippines, mm -hmm. I find out they're building close to the water. Mm -hmm. I told them, like Hawaii, we should stay away from the water, mm -hmm. put up recreation area, gym area, uh, football field, whatever we want, mm -hmm. and we should live in the mountain, mm -hmm. on the mountain, like Hong Kong. Yeah, or, or like Hilo. You yeah. know, after the uh, 1946 tsunami, they just made the, that coastal area, they just made it into parkland. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. And we can build the houses onto the mountain. Mm -hmm. It will not fall down. Mm -hmm. We'll get it going, and uh, people will be much happier. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we should save all the agricultural land mm -hmm. and build yep. uh, you know, affordable housing or middle-income middle houses mm -hmm. or whatever you want to do. Well, what I like about this is you are emphasizing affordable. And one big reason why you and I and everybody else see all these people uh, being homeless is they have they're not uh, bums from the mainland these are local people who have been priced out mm -hmm. of their homes mm -hmm. just can't afford it mm -hmm. it, it can't it's yeah. our, our program is very affordable mm -hmm. and uh, very competitive mm -hmm. and we like to go in and help people like them yeah. as well as everybody else but we need to get our product in uh, I haven't talk too much in Hawaii about this, more abroad that I go, I, I fly out. But we need to get this stuff out on the market and save our people. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe, not maybe, we should get them to work for us too, to build their own house. We just provide the material, you know? Mm -hmm. And this can be done. Yeah, yeah. In, in an, well, under supervision, so yes. that it's a very, very nice, safe, secure yes. home also. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Dennis Suzuki, you said you like to help Hawaii, and I think that we have uh, illustrated this very, very, very nicely. Oh, and I should say disclaimer, neither I nor the state of Hawaii nor Think Tech Hawaii are uh, authorizing or endorsing yes. uh, these strata products. We are here strictly for an infor informational uh, session. But we uh, wish you all the best in your endeavor and look forward to, to reading about you in the paper as you supply well, affordable thank you very housing. Much. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting. Uh, it, it's been a while mm -hmm. since uh, I've been trying to get people to, to listen to all the products that I have that I sell. But my job is to make sure when we have equipment and systems, it has to meet Hawaii's climate and mm -hmm. weather and everything. Mm -hmm. And not just say, I'm going to build a road, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And it not, don't work like that. And when we spend the money, we have to make sure we have the longevity of a good, mm -hmm. long-living mm -hmm. house for our children's children. Well, I, I chair the Energy Efficiency Committee for the Hawaii Building Code Council, and I'm with you there 100%. And just about everybody I know is with, shares your dream of Thank you a so resource-efficient, energy-efficient Hawaii. On that very, very cheery note, we bid fond farewell to Dennis Suzuki and our beloved audience, Howard Wig, Code Green. See you next time.